Hey, it's Jason. I'm here in my 1999 Land Rover Discovery 1. Uh, yes, it is a 99. Uh, in the United States, the 99D1 uh, came out. I know in the UK, the 98, and then 99, the D2 came out. Uh, but I, anyways, I'm in my 99 Land Rover uh, Discovery 1, and today I'm going to talk about this additive curd called the Purple Ice um, Cooling System Optimizer and Conditioner. And the reason why I'm going to talk about it, uh, on these older vehicles, you know, you put your coolant in or antifreeze, if you call it that. This is the green solution. It holds about four gallons. Um, you put it in. It, you know, goes through your system. It goes into the radiator, and it helps cool your engine. Um, I'm thinking about it because I'm driving the D1 this week, and it's going to be 80, 90 degrees Fahrenheit, which isn't that hot. But it's an older car. It has the... Um, you know, aluminum, aluminum in the engine, and they, they are prone to head gasket failures. And this was 10 bucks at Napa. Another brand is uh, Water Wetter. And this was initially designed for race cars that use pure water in the uh, system for cooling. And you add this, and it helps keep corrosion and helps the water cool more. In modern day cars, you have antifreeze because because you don't want pure water because it could freeze in the winter and this is still going to help and still going to function it's just not going to be um, as good as if it was pure water, uh, so I'm told. So since I'm going to be driving this car more, I would love to be able to have the system not have to work as hard to keep things cool. So a few important things to note about this Purple Ice um, additive that I'm going to add. This isn't going to lower the cooling system below the thermostatically controlled temperature. Um, if your car is overheating, this isn't a magic potion. This isn't going to help with that. Fix the issue of why your car is overheating. Um, it's going to also help clean and lubricate all of the water pump and sills. So presumably this water pump is probably 22 years old, so that's good. It's going to help prevent corrosion in the system. But really the key of what these um, systems would do is it's all about surface tension. And surface tension is the tendency of molecules on the surface of liquid to stick together. So if you have water in a cup, those molecules can come together and stick. And when it sticks, that's going to minimize the radiator area, more area to transfer heat. So the radiator can't work as great as it can because we know in science, more surface area is good for cooling. So if you can uh, reduce surface tension, which is the molecules on the surface sticking together, that's going to give you more surface area, which is what you want because more surface area is a good thing. Um, this 12 ounce bottle will treat three to five gallons. So I'm going to add it to the antifreeze um, under the, uh, the hood. Um, I don't think 12 ounces is going to cause a significant issue with having more than what's in there. I'll keep an eye on that. Uh, it claims it can help cooling by 20 degrees, so that's going to be interesting to test. Uh, and I'm using it again just to test it. I want my vehicle and the engine and the engine temperature um, coolant to cool quicker and not have to work as hard. Um, but keep in mind, the Land Rover Discovery 1 OEM temp thermostat, it's set to 195 degrees Fahrenheit, meaning things are going to open up when it reaches 195 degrees to cool. Thus, when it hits 195 degrees, the radiator and everything starts to function, and then this is going to be used. So I'm going to put this in. I am measuring the temperature of my vehicle with the iCarsoft. I'm not using the gauge. I'm going to show that here in a moment about how I'm getting the temperature so I can actually understand is it cooling more. So let's go ahead and hop under the hood and install this, and I'll show you how that works. Okay, to really see how the uh, engine temperature is in this car, I want to avoid just looking at the gauge and seeing if that drops it because it's always going to be controlled by the computer. I really want to go in and see the, um, the actual streaming data off of the ODB2 port um, and what the engine temperature is. So I'm using my iCar Soft. It has OBD2 um, on it. Um, it also has my stuff for my Land Rover, but it doesn't have the Discovery 1. 
So it's going to do a check and it's going to determine what you know system to use. Basically, it's going to use the ISO 9141. And I just drove about 13, maybe 14 miles. So I'm going to be able to go in here and I'm going to go to data stream. And I'm going to say select items. And I'm going to want to look at engine operating temperature, I believe it is called. Um, I definitely would always have a reader, and this is how I'm going to test if that purple ice is actually helping. So engine coolant, and then escape, and I'm running at, I accidentally exited it there, hang on. It looked like it said 192, so let me go back in. I'm going to look at engine coolant temperature, I'm going to hit escape to confirm. I'm 194, 192 um, today. Now, this test is going to be a little flawed because my, my environment isn't controlled. I'm doing this in the morning. It's only about 60 degrees. It's going to get up to 70 later today. But I'm going to put this in, and I'll see what I'm running at. You know, it's basically 192 degrees or so is the engine coolant temperature as of right now before I put in the purple ice. I'm going to put it in and see what, if anything, that does to the engine coolant temp. Okay, so you just don't want to pop the hood. <clears throat> I'm going to use, again, the purple ice claiming 25%, 25 degrees cooler. This is your radiator. This is what everything's gonna go through to help cool the engine. There's an electronic fan back here um, that will actually turn when it gets a specific temperature and effectively help cool everything. This is your radiator plug, but this is the reservoir that you're gonna use. So you would wanna open this up has to be cool. Do not do this when the engine is hot. I drove this car at 8 a.m. It's now 1230. Four and a half hours later, it is cool. You're going to want to look in here and you're going to basically want to see. I'm going to try to show you. Inside of this, you can see that there's a little tiny like plus sign that kind of pops up if you can see in there you see that you want at a cool engine you want to be level with that little plus sign on this d1 now i debated do i remove 12 ounces of antifreeze and put this in when i watched the manufacturer's video they didn't so i'm just going to open this up and i'm going to dump it right in before, before you add it, they, they recommend you shake it. I have shaken this very, very well, um, so it's nicely mixed. And then what you're going to want to do is just take it and just dump it in the fluid reservoir. I'm putting 12 ounces in. That's that. And it added, it's definitely a little bit higher than the, um, than that little plus sign in there to measure it, but not significant. Um, I consulted the guys at Napa as well as the manufacturer. They said it would be okay. And you can kind of see in here, you can still see the little device that you would use to measure it. And then you just want to secure your cap back on nice and tight and that's it so i'm going to be able to drive the vehicle and then i'll be able to determine um is it keeping it cooler i took a reading with my icar soft using the odb2 part of it and i'm going to stream that data once i pick up my son and come back home later today and see what if any difference it had using the per price cooling system optimizer and conditioner thanks for tuning in i'll uh, i'll let you know how it goes uh in a second um i have to wait till later today when i drive but it will be added to this video okay so i just did a long drive the same drive i did this morning but it's significantly warmer it's probably 15 degrees fahrenheit maybe 18 degrees fahrenheit warmer than it was this morning and it's operating at 192 degrees fahrenheit 
which I believe before it was 195, 196. So just on this drive, I've noticed the identical drive. It is now warmer and sunnier. It is operating at a lower temperature with that purple ice in the coolant. So, um, you know, the perfect environment would have been exact outdoor temperature for both trips. So tomorrow morning, I assume, it would be similar weather, and I'll test it in the morning. But I'm happy with this temperature. This is, uh, this is nice. And uh, I'll continue to monitor it and see how it goes. Thanks for tuning in. I would say for the price and the simplicity of this purple ice, why not give it a go? I don't see any downside. Okay, so it's the next day. It's the morning. I did the exact same drive. The temperature is pretty much the same outside. So um, the engine's reading 192. So it's definitely cooler. Um, and remember, you know, the thermostat, you know, is going to keep it at a specific range. So I didn't expect this to be 20 degrees lower. What I do expect it to be able to keep it cooler easier and quicker so if you think about like the pumps and everything that kicks on and the work the radiator does and the fluid and all um it's not having to work as hard to get to this temperature it's actually keeping it cooler probably working easier with the purple ice that i put in um this is about as a controlled of a test environment as i can have obviously if i was in some scientific lab or something it would be much better but um 10 bucks, you dump it in, it takes a minute to put in. I don't see any drawbacks. Check out the link at the bottom of this video where you can buy it. And be sure to check out my blog.